All right. This is a fabulous question and one that I get a lot on issues with multiple targets in specific campaigns, not getting early impressions. This is, by the way, this is actually a response question to uh, one of our newsletters. So if you don't know, we put out a weekly newsletter. It's actionable. It's tactical. This one was specifically on a uh, how to work with placement percentages when you have more than one target in a campaign and go over a little bit of tactics because there's some nuances that you should be aware of if you're going to leverage placements there. But uh, each of my responses get a customized answer. This one's in the form of a video. So I'm going to be answering this question. Um, so the thing is, thanks. Of course, my pleasure. Uh, I find with campaigns with five to six targets, only the first few get juice. If this is a budget issue, it will be daunting restructure everything so the budget can be allocated properly. Absolutely get you here. And this is why I don't subscribe to um, a hard and fast rule when uh, deciding how many keywords are going to go into a specific campaign. If you wanted a much more in-depth look of this, uh, I actually have uh, this YouTube channel, how many keywords per campaign. It's going to give you a lot of nuances that might be well worth um, looking into. So what I would say here is for the most part... Um, we really only use single keyword campaigns when we're looking at exact match or if we're being very aggressive with something. Um, a Maybe a more tactical in the weeds specific use case would be in the case of, say, we're trying to get a bunch of long tail variations for a very specific phrase. We might for a time test being aggressive with say a modified broad match but we would want that in say a single keyword campaign and that way we can cap budgets on them so what i would say is that uh it, it can be very helpful that the more uh, minimal the amount of keywords that you're putting into a campaign the more you can leverage budgets to sort of cap spend and that again this is that would be a much longer response video and much more tactical. So if you want me to answer that question, feel free to show up to our uh, Ask Jungler segment on Thursdays. But um, it's, it's much more, I would say the juice is worth the squeeze if you are, if you have a very aggressive exact match ranking strategy. There, I think single keywords can be really, really beneficial. But what I will say is that there's more than one reason other than just budget as to why your targets may or may not be getting impressions or maybe not getting the traction you want. Uh, the first one is going to be your bids. How high are your bids? If your bid is not aggressive enough to really get a lot of impressions in the ad auction, you're just not going to get a lot of impressions whatsoever. And a lot of times that's fine because the particular keyword isn't necessarily, not all keywords are worth aggressively spending on. And that's perfectly fine and that's normal. And in fact, if you were to aggressively spend on all the targets across your entire account, uh, you would be running a very, very unprofitable account. And so that tactic is perfectly fine. But the second thing um, that is often overlooked in this question of I'm not getting impressions for a particular target is the search volume. A lot of time, like all of the keyword research tools, while good and the best you're ever going to do, and we use keyword research tools and we use them to look at search volume. So I'm not knocking any of the tools out there. I'm just saying at best, uh, keyword research tools in terms of search volume are an educated guess. Now, they're a very sophisticated and complicated educated guess, but at that case, they're an educated guess. Search volume on keywords will fluctuate by days of the week, by the weather, by, you know, general sentiment of the economy. There's so many things that impact search volume. And so if you're worried about you know, certain, especially like long tail keywords are not getting little to no impressions. Also think of it in terms of market. So because that's kind of a usual thing, it's not abnormal for certain keywords or certain targets to not really be getting many impressions. Um, so for that case, I wouldn't sweat it because again, you're saying, uh, it would be daunting to restructure everything, and I agree. 
So here's what I would do. I would go through your account if you're looking at specific targets that you really want to control things on. I would recommend going through your account and saying which keywords, which targets do I really need to make sure that I'm getting impressions on and I'm getting traction on. And for those keywords, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put fewer of them in my campaigns, potentially um, a single keyword campaign. So strategy there is one campaign, one ad group, one keyword. Everything is very well controlled. But as you can imagine, that ends up with thousands of campaigns for every individual product you're advertising, which can spin out of control really fast. It can make your ad account very difficult to understand. And so the way we think about grouping keywords um, is on a couple levels. One, of course, you know, how much control do we need? But the other thing that we we do when trying to determine what keywords we should be grouping together, and honestly, I I don't think I've heard anyone else in the space talk about this, is um, in terms of strategy. We group keywords in terms of strategy. Um, so for example, if we had a group of ASINs, right? If you're looking at a list of ASINs, you can see which ones are performing or not, but it's a little bit hard to determine where those ASINs were actually found versus if we were to group into a campaign, um, uh, all of the ASINs that are ranked on page one for our main um, keyword. That would be a very logical grouping that helps us understand the intent of that campaign and we would put that in the naming structure somewhere so you can also think of uh campaigns as ways to logically group keywords so you can understand and better optimize based on the strategy that you're trying to run there i would also think through it in orders of that um so again i would only if you're if you're going to restructure only pick the targets that you really need to be intentional with. Again, not every single keyword is going to uh, need the aggressive bids that are going to you're going to be required to get that amount, you know, high amount of impressions you want. And you just might not have the stopper search volume on those keywords. The other thing I would say, and this is a pro tip here as well, some people talk about it, but again, I don't think it's talked about enough, is how to go about the restructuring. So you need to be very intentional here because oftentimes what people observe, and this is true, is that old campaigns tend to perform best. The original placement of keywords and the original campaign setup uh, tends to continuously get the best performance, which can be a problem, again, when you're trying to isolate something, right? You want to get more intentional, more strategic, but you're saying, I have this really good performance in the original campaign. How do I have my cake and eat it too? So here's how you do that. What you want to do is that for every single, um, for all of your best targets, leave them in the original campaign. Now, obviously, this doesn't work if you're trying to launch it in, say, uh, another match type or a different match type. Like if you have it working in phrase and you need to put it in exact. But if you have the original keyword in the match type and in the structure you want, you just have all this other stuff around it. Instead of taking out your best performing things and putting them in the new structure, in the new campaigns, what I recommend is leaving your best performing things. And you can, quote, repurpose these campaigns uh, simply through renaming the campaigns and renaming the ad groups. You actually have a video on our channel on how to do that. Um, or renaming through bulk files because it's a lot easier to rename things at scale through bulk files. Recommend that checking out that video if that would be helpful. Um, but again, so what I would say is leave the best stuff in the original, rename the campaign if you have to, and then I would take all of the other stuff out and I would put that in the other campaign. And again, I'm only doing this for the things that are going to be really important for my control in terms of bids, budgets, all of the above. Everything else, just know that some targets getting impressions and some not is just the name of the game. You will never, despite how high and insanely high you put your bids, you will never have all of your targets across your entire account generating high volumes of impressions. And in fact, despite even high bids and budgets, you might have certain targets that will never generate impressions. And again, that's totally fine. Um, and in fact, if you restricted your account to only the targets that are generating high volumes of impressions and got rid of everything else, you would actually significantly hurt your visibility on the platform. It's not a good strategy.
So I would say, again, you want to be intentional with the things that you need to be intentional with and the rest of it, optimize it um, for the best performance in whatever level that makes sense for your account. So hopefully it helps.